Welcome back to another episode of Is It Rigged? Today we're going to be discussing your 18650 battery, the proper way to charge your 18650 battery, the proper way to test your 18650 battery, all coming up. Thanks for sticking around and let's jump right into it. By the way, while you're here, let's go ahead and click that subscribe button. That right, where is it? Is it right there? Right there, the little subscribe button. Click subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'll give you a notice for whenever I upload a new video. And if you like what kind of content I'm putting out, give me a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment below what you would like for me to do. This way I can uh, know what you guys are looking for. Uh, I'm learning in the same process of you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in right into your proper charging method uh, and the proper tools that you need to use to charge. Uh, there's two different kind of chargers that you can get. Uh, actually, there's three uh, that uh, I say that to me that works great. I, uh, I have a Zan Flare. That Zen Flare is model C4. This charger works with the lithium ion battery. So make sure when you pick a charger and tester to stick with the main brands, you've got Zen Flare, which you know reads a little bit high, between eight and 10% higher than say your Opus or your Mega Cell charger. Uh, I'm currently in the process of waiting on getting my Mega Cell charger, so I uh, can't wait to get those. Do uh, use or stick with one brand while I am uh, doing the process. I've got a couple of these Zan flares, but mostly what I use, I use the Opus BTC 3400, and uh, this has been a really great charger. Uh, I've got quite a few of these. I do most of my testing on you know give me up to a thousand milliamp hour of charging uh now the zen flare only gives me 500 milliamps of charging so it takes twice as long than the opus but if you set your opus up on discharge test when you put your cells in and make sure that your positive points up uh, you can tell where the positive are by the little lip ring on all of the cells. But uh, make sure uh, that you run the Opus on discharge test. Well, it, what it will do is it will charge up your batteries first. And then it will run a discharge. Now, the, uh, the current I have it set at is a thousand milliamp. This current uh, setup is uh, or has been running for an hour and 39 minutes at a thousand milliamps. So it's charging it at a thousand milliamps. Uh, that's the current voltage of each cell right above it. And then it, it's not currently discharging at this point, but it will show your discharge rate here. Once you get your display chart or milliamp hour, um, you can. Uh, Go through, and if you want to make any changes to it, you can. You can also get your resistance as well. So, I recommend the, the Opus uh, 3400. Now, the 3400 is essentially the older version. I believe it was the 3100, uh, but uh, version two, they had an issue with the fans that they corrected, and they just started calling this the 3400. So, uh, the Zen Flares does not have a fan. The resistors on the inside do get quite warm with the, um, the with the discharge rate, but it's only 500 milli uh, milliamps. So. Uh, and this one's a thousand so so that would be my proper way of telling you how to uh, charge now uh, the discharge rate and or the discharge process for the opus uh, let's show you what options you have up here we can go and hold mode down it'll flash and we'll go through it. You have charge, 
you have discharge you have discharge refresh which will recycle your sale several times to see if it can rebuild it you have charge test you have quick test I don't recommend getting that some people will do that to get their resistance you have charge and again you have a discharge discharge refresh charge test quick test charge discharge and then of course I use charge test and um, I believe I said discharge test earlier but that would be charge test with the and again that'll charge it up and then it'll discharge you and show you your current milliamp hour that would be your your proper charging and discharging methods using this particular charger now let's move on to the Zan flare okay now on the Zan flare what I recommend doing is not hooking up your power till you load your Zan flare now what you've got to do is the positives for the Zan flares point down they point to the bottom towards the screen so I'm gonna load up a couple of different ones So we have all of our cells in there. They're in there nice and tight. Make sure that uh, make sure all of your cells has an insulator um, between the positive and the negative. Um, that's very, very important. All right, so now what I'll do is I will go ahead and plug it in, plug the power in. And it'll start flashing. I run the Zen Flare on Norm Test. That's going to charge it at 500 uh, milliamps, and it's also going to discharge it at 500 milliamps. So make sure to run that on Norm Test on the Zen Flare. That will charge up the uh, the sale and it will give you your reading it will also give you if you go up here to each one of these little buttons that tells you your current voltage that would be your milliamp that would be your current uh, resistance MR that's the timer that's been running so that would be your proper way to to run your charge and discharge process on the Zan Flare. Um, the Mega Cell Charger, I can't do a demonstration of that yet. I have an order in. I have yet to get my uh, Mega Cell Charger. So once I get the Mega Cell Charger, I'll do a video on that process. Lastly, after your cells has charged up, discharged, and you've wrote your uh, discharge milliamp hour and your resistance on the battery, let it set for a minimum of three to four weeks. Uh, some people say two weeks. Uh, some people, you know, may go longer. Longer the better. But uh, what we're looking for is after it charges up and it sets for the, you know, two to four weeks, we want to check for battery discharge. If that battery drops below 4.10 volts, or has an internal resistance of a hundred or higher you need to put it in the bucket and retest it you can run it through on the opus a refresh a uh, discharge refresh and run that through like three or four times and see if that sale can be rebuilt sometimes you can salvage the sales by uh, running the refresh on it and that will save the sale and you can use it but uh, make sure that after you re redo your discharge refresh to uh, let it set for another two weeks to four weeks so you can run your test on it make sure it's not self-discharging now why do we want to know about self-discharging self-discharging if the battery is self-discharging and you have it in your pack say you got a pack of say we'll say 200 so you've got 200 cells in one pack and they're all linked together if that one cell is dropping down voltage, it's going to bring your whole pack down. Now you say, Michael, why would one battery bring down a whole pack? Well, for one, that cell could eventually lead to shorting, which brings me to 
your other option. You need to have cell level fusing. I'm going to leave, leave a link down below and here's a picture of what cell level fusing is. Now what that does is if that uh, one battery in that pack shorts out, it allows you to keep running and it saves yourself from a fire. Why would anybody not run a pack without it being fused? I love the battery hookups, cell level fusing. Uh, it gives you the ability to be safe. So make sure with that link down below, you go check out the cell level fusing. They're out currently right now. It's June 30th, 2020 in the making of this video. Mid July of 2020, they're supposed to have some more in. But the cell level discharging, it'll bring your whole pack down. And again, that pack, you do not want to lose any amperage out of that pack. That's the whole point of you doing all of your homework ahead of time, charging up all your batteries, testing them, let them set. Because these are used batteries for most part. And you definitely want to make sure that the battery is up to snuff because you're putting possibly your house at risk. And we don't want to even go into that in this part of the video. There's another guy out there named Average Joe that did a video about, um, you know, protecting your house from these cells. And this is part of a follow-up, making sure that we test these cells so we don't burn anything down or put anybody in, je in jeopardy. Uh, I've got two little kids and I do not want to put them in jeopardy. But of course, I'm not running these cells in my house. Uh, these cells are gonna be ran in an outside building just to protect my family. We're gonna go through the process of checking these cells to see if they drop below 4.10 volts and that is DC. Next, you want to make sure of is your internal resistance. Uh, this particular one had, it looks like I had an internal resistance of 228. Yeah, my handwriting is terrible. So um, even though if this one does test good, now this is a 2400 milliamp hour cell. Now 228 on your resistance is really, really high. I'm not even going to test this. Actually, I will. Let's go ahead and turn on the meter. I'll put this one in the bucket to run a retest on. And if it if the re internal resistance drops below 100 and uh, that milliamp hour comes up, say 2000 or 2200, I'll keep it. Knowing that this is a 2400 milliamp hour battery, 1613 is just not for me. So let's bring the, uh, the uh, good old fluky here. Let's get another little pack over here. And I'm just gonna set my ground on the bottom. 409. Now that's right at the level of should I or shouldn't I? But I've set a goal of 4.10. So I'm going to put that in the dis self discharge. 3.60. That would be another self discharge. 4.13. Now, some of these that are 3.25, 3.33, uh, those may not have been recharged back up. Uh, I did have a bad charger there for a little while. So, we have our discharge and our charge batteries. So, at this point, what we'll do is I'll keep processing through all of my batteries, which means charge them up, discharge them write my information down, write my resistance down, and of course my chargers will charge them back up. I will let those set for my uh, 30 days minimum, and then I'll come back through and test for dischargers. That's the process that I 
think that everybody should follow any of your batteries that are below 4.10 volts. Put them in the bucket, retest them. Please do not put the ones that are self-discharging in your packs. In the long run, this, this will save you a lot of time and money. So I'm going to leave a link description down below for a battery hookup where you can buy great batteries at affordable prices. There's a uh, also a link down below for uh, power to go. Uh, Mr. Terry has opened up a new uh, new store there. He's got great prices on all assortments of batteries. And then of course, um, make sure to uh, check out the other links below uh, on the test equipment that I use. I've got the uh, Zan Flare, I've got the Opus, I've got a flute meter, I've got the cell chargers. So um, I've got my camera gear that I'm using. Thanks for sticking around for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, share. Leave me a comment down below what you would like to see. Thanks for sticking around for another Is It Rigged video. You guys take care. Welcome back. So in today's episode, we're going to be uh, discussing... No.